Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to Faces video number four. We're going to be talking about skin tones. In this video, I'm going to show you how to mix skin tone colors using a variety of media. Gouache, markers, watercolor pencils, and just a billion things, right? Whatever I have going on in here. Here's what I'm not going to go over in this video. I'm not going to talk about drawing faces, drawing different angles of faces. I'm not going to talk about the specifics of rendering faces or makeup. I'm not going to talk about, you know, why I place my shadows where I place them because I've already gone over all those topics in previous face videos. Okay. There's no point in a series if I just keep repeating myself, right? Okay, so today I'm going to teach you, hey, mix these colors to get a good skin tone. Here are some good marker options for skin tones. Okay, that's the focus of this video. This is my second most requested video to date, and it all started when I posted this flesh tones chart on my Instagram. Now, I created this teaching tool for my in-person students. This is 100% gouache, which is my preferred watercolor medium of choice. And I'm going to show you how to mix these color tones. There are a lot of beautiful watercolor artists out there who are doing beautiful things with gouache and watercolor and whatnot, where you have these like incredibly dark brown skin tones with like blue shadows and like silver highlights and these colors all working together just make everything about this portrait gorgeous, you know, playing with complementary colors to get, create deep shadows and all these beautiful things. And I love all those beautiful things and I admire the hell out of people who can do those things. However, I'm not an illustrator. I'm a designer and my illustrations have always been about focusing on the clothes, focusing my attention and my time on getting the details right on my garments, making sure that my knits look chunky and fuzzy and that my jackets look perfectly tailored and my tweeds looking appropriately tweedy. And skin color is it should look like skin. It should make a body look 3D, and that's kind of it. I don't spend a, a whole lot of time, a whole lot of time, a whole lot of time laboring over it. And so what I end up doing is I mix, actually, the shadow color. I take some, move it into another bubble in my palette. I add a little bit more water to it to get a lighter shade, AKA a more diluted version of the color, and that's my skin color. I paint the skin color, I wait for the whole shebang to dry, and then I take the darker color and I put in the shadows. Sometimes I'll do a third color if I want to get more detailed and the rendering style that I've chosen for the project is a lot more elaborate. I'll do that, but I will do typically at least one shadow color to create the 3D effect. There are a lot of things you can do, a lot of different colors you could mix uh, and combine to get skin tones. I'm going to show you what works for me as kind of a starting point for you to go and explore. So Windsor & Newton is my tried and true brand that I love. Uh, some of you know that I went to Japan recently and I picked up a few different brands of gouache to test out, but I don't have any sort of definitive results on that. So we're going to stick to these for now. Now you'll see that the Windsor & Newton tubes are silver now. The white labels are kind of just the same stuff just older and gouache lasts a really long time and so I'll have these older tubes which are perfectly fine. This is the burnt sienna and I use burnt sienna as a base for my lightest to my kind of dark medium color bases. This is burnt umber and I use the burnt umber as a base for these darker skin tones. I use a yellow ochre never by itself because it's too green, makes someone look a little bit sickly. Okay? But I use that to temper some of the orangeness of the burnt sienna. 
Sometimes I use an ultramarine or another similarly dark reddish blue, not a yellowish blue, nothing too turquoisey. And cadmium red. I like this to create my rosier skin tones. You know, girls who wear makeup, they're familiar with buying foundation where you have like, you know, warm undertones, cool undertones, neutral undertones, you know, and you go and check for your undertones so you can figure out which foundation works best for you. You know, just like that. I use Naples Yellow when I want to create more golden, you know, kind of Asian looking skin tones. And then... Of course, I use, I add a little bit of black to create these darkest skin tones. And even if I am doing a super dark skin tone like this corner in here, I never use straight up black for shadowing because it looks really harsh. I will always put in a little bit of the burnt umber as well. So these are the main colors that I use in gouache to create skin tones. And I use the exact same things in watercolor. So I'm not going to double up on those demos. Okay. I prefer gouache when I'm doing darker skin tones because my personal preference is that darker colors look better when they're more opaque paint. I think that the more opaque paint makes the color look richer and darker, which is kind of the intent of darker colors. And that applies for skin and fabrics and anything really. I never use white for skin tone. With watercolor, the best way to lighten a watercolor is to add water, not white. White tends to add a texture, a chalkiness. And so when you add white to skin tones, you end up with that kind of like old school 50s, like pancake makeup looking sort of thing. Kind of that chalky, bad foundation sort of look, which you don't want. You want skin to look like skin. So as usual, I have my palette, I have my water jar, I have my sable round watercolor brushes. I have some clean paper towels and I'm going to mix a few of these. I'm not going to mix every single one in this chart here because you, I mean, this took a long time to make. I'm going to get you guys started a little bit. Again, don't use your teeth to open these tubes. So I'm going to start with this burnt sienna. And I just want to show you guys this burnt sienna and how orange it is. To temper some of this orange, I like to use a little bit of this yellow ochre. You see how it's maybe a little bit less tangy, but still a little bit fake and bake. If I want something golden like this, a little bit of this Naples yellow. Creamier golden tone. If I wanted it cooler, I would add a tiny bit. Do you see how tiny bit? of the ultramarine that I'm using. You know, complementary colors, orange and blue, will uh, tone down the intensity of either color when you mix them together. Okay, you can always add more, so always start real light. All right, I like that. So I'm gonna take a well of water. Number one rule of painting, if you want smooth, always paint one section at a time so that everything is wet at the same time and dry at the same time. Let's pretend there's a collar there and that's where we cut off. And then you're going to wait for it to dry completely before you take a slightly skinnier brush if you want. And then you would add your shadows. I'm not doing it right now because this is still wet, but. If you shadow when things are still wet, you get a softer edge. 
which is awesome if you know how to paint, but it is harder to control. And just keep that in mind. If you want it even more toned down than this, all you would have to do is add a touch more blue and you would get this tone family. If you want this rosy tone, we take our original burnt sienna and yellow ochre and add a bit of the cadmium red. You can use whatever red you have hanging out. I don't have to go out and, did I just absorb all of my paint into my paintbrush? Yes, I did. Burnt sienna, little yellow ochre, little cadmium red. Let's add a little bit of that blue. And there we have our pinker, rosier skin, skin tones. This family of skin tones here, okay? Now for this middle row, you're going to be using a lot more paint because you're getting much more opaque. You're gonna take your burnt umber, you're gonna take your burnt sienna and you're gonna add a lot of this burnt umber to it. That's nice. That's this family in here. Okay. You're not going to water it down too much. When you have darker colors like this, this is what happens when you water it down. It just doesn't have the same impact and it starts looking grainy. And then for super dark skin tone, sometimes I'll just use burnt umber straight out of the tube because look at how beautiful that color is. You don't need to fix that. That's gorgeous. If you want it any darker, I'd add a little bit of black you know, for a little bit of shadow, All right? And get even chocolatier, but the burnt umber on its own is a really beautiful brown, okay? So to recap, golden skin tones, we have a burnt sienna, yellow ochre, a little bit of the blue and the Naples yellow. Rosy skin tones, we have the burnt sienna, the yellow ochre, the tiny bit of the ultramarine, and quite a bit of red to get that pinky undertone, cool undertone. To get these mahogany skin tones, burnt sienna and burnt umber. And then the chocolatiest skin tones, burnt umber straight out of the tube or with a little bit of black, All right? When you're mixing your watercolor colors, you want to mix in your most opaque, darkest color, your shadow color, and then distribute your paint into little bubbles and then add a little bit of water to get your three values of the same color. I mean, those of you who watch my channel know that this is what I do with all painting, whether it's a blouse or skin, okay? Mix the shadow color and then dilute a little bit for the base color. For those of you who like to work with ink, I have the Higgins ink, and this is the only brand of ink that I've ever used before. And if you guys have another brand of ink that you absolutely adore and you really need me to try it because it is the second coming of Jesus and you really need to spread the good word, then let me know. I'm gonna take a little bit of this brown. There's no special color name, it's just brown. And I like a little bit of orange. black. Just a reminder that I prefer dye-based inks or waterproof drawing inks over pigment-based inks. Here's the brown by itself, which has a really nice rosy tone to it, which makes it really nice for darker skin tones.
There's a diluted version of that. And that one is not so great for skin tones. It loses some of the warmth. So I like to add a touch of orange. And you get these nice, cooler, rosy skin tones that are in this row, right? So that's a little bit of brown and a little bit of orange. And you can add a little bit more of the brown to make it a little less rosy. And then if you want to get a little bit darker, ooh, too much black, let's add some more brown. Those are very black. So you get these beautiful chocolatey skin tones. Although, I'll be honest with you, I don't love ink for darker skin tones because, like I said before, I prefer a more opaque, rich look for darker skin tones. And ink is just very translucent. It's very, nature is very translucent. And I don't love that look. It's not my favorite. Although if I'm doing an all ink illustration, I will use it, but I prefer the look of dark skin tones in gouache. You guys see the difference there? Okay, Because the ink, it really shows the grain of the paper. I have three different kinds of watercolor pencils here. I have the uh, Faber-Cassell Albert Durer watercolor pencil in Venetian red and burnt ochre. I have the Derwent regular watercolor pencil, very English watercolor with an OU, in deep vermilion and copper beach. And then I have the Derwent Ink Tense watercolor pencils in baked earth willow and bark and these are the ones that i've been using for skin colors the venetian red is quite pink and i use this as a blusher sometimes and it's in that cool tone family and the burnt ochre is a little bit on the yellow, ochre cool side, a little too yellow. And so I will mix both to create the color I need. This deep vermilion makes for a nice rosy skin tone. This copper beach, depending on how dark you get, you can have a softer skin tone here. You can mix these two colors together to get a more Caucasian skin tone, or you can lay down a lot of color and get much darker skin tones here. Okay. And you know, it's like using color pencils and watercolor theory together where the more color pencil you add, the darker it is, which is like using a uh, more opaque paint, you know, like more color equals darker color equals shadow color. And then here, this baked earth color just makes a really beautiful 
warm color that is really similar to the burnt sienna that were, we were using here. And so this makes an excellent base to mix with other colors. So here's the baked earth. Here's a bit of willow. Here's a bit more willow. And you need to try these out with your hand and really sit and explore the different skin tones that you can create. Here's willow by itself, which makes a really nice skin tone family. Here is very opaque willow, which is this beautiful, rich brown. And then we have bark. Oh, I love this color. Every time I use it, I squeal or grown or something. This bark is just this beautiful, chocolatey, purpley, dark skin color that I adore. If I ever do another all white collection and I'm illustrating it, I would use like a middle to light gray paper and use this color as my skin tone and then put them in all white dresses. Oh, yes, that is what I would do. Beautiful. Okay. So those are some options for you guys for watercolor pencils. A couple of my students got together and bought me a bunch of these Winsor & Newton watercolor markers at the end of the semester and uh, as a farewell gift, and uh, they're awesome. Out of the ones that I have, I also bought a few on my own, and... The burnt umber is really the only one that I would use as a skin color. That's a beautiful brown. And then you take a little bit of water and you can just soften and blend the edges. Woo. It's a little bit more on the goldy side, and this one is more on the purple side, but that one is also really pretty. It's like a dark, burnt toffee, so much pretty, it hurts. Now, this is a watercolor marker. Don't think that you can just do this with any markers, okay? Here's a Faber-Cassell, and this is just a regular marker, and the dark sepia. And wait. Did I know that this, what? These are supposed to be waterproof. Um, It says it's waterproof. Although I've never done that before. Um. <laughs> okay. I have some investigating to do. <laughs> I did not know that was gonna happen, you guys. I, okay, That's, that was weird, okay. Well, here's a Copic. Don't tell me this one is gonna start bleeding. Now this actually acts like a marker and does nothing, okay? So don't think that all markers are gonna do this. I mean, is it because I didn't let it dry? Let's see, let's let that dry for a second and see if it still bleeds. Okay, the more it dries, the less it bleeds, but it still bleeds. All right, note to self, if you are layering paint on top of marker and you don't want the marker to bleed, you can safely use Copics because the Copics won't bleed, but your favorite Cassels will blend out. 
okay, it's dry and it's still bleeding out. You learn something new every day. All right, one last thing in the painting category. If you watched my Japan haul video, you know that I picked up some of these brush pens when I was over there. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I am falling in love with these. I'm having so much fun with these. This is the Kuratake Zig Clean Color Real Brush. This one is number 62 dark brown. And this is number 69 blush. And these colors are both super beautiful. They apply brushy, not solid like the Winsor & Newton watercolor marker. But when you add some water, they blend out really beautifully. And this dark brown, it also has a little bit of those purpley undertones so pretty now with watered down like this this is way too ashy to be a skin color but used more opaquely that's a nice dark brown this is the blush which makes for a really beautiful rosy toned you know english maiden who never saw the sun sort of peaches and cream skin tone. Those go well together like that. Ooh, so pretty. This is the Sai, S-A-I, Japanese traditional colors brush pen. And this one, again, applies very brushy, but blends out really beautifully. And this one is too golden to use on its own so I would probably mix it with another color for skin color but I just wanted to show you how cool that was <laughs> I'm still tripping out on that marker thing that's crazy I think I need to pick up more of those markers I have a whole playlist of videos that deep dive into my shopping patterns for different media. I have a video on, you know, what I look for when I shop for paints, intro to paints, intro to color pencils, intro to markers. So when I shop for markers, okay, and if you're really interested, I want you to go watch those. But the important keynote for this is whenever I buy markers, I buy markers in pairs. I buy the base color, whether it's skin, hair, clothing, whatever. And then I buy a color for the shadow color. And whenever I test the color, I test them layered on top of each other because that's how I'm going to use them in my rendering. This is a Prismacolor Brick Beige, and this is a color that I use often for Caucasian skin tones. And if I'm at the store testing this out, I will paint a swatch, and then I will pick a few that I think would be good shadow colors. This is Cinnamon Toast, and I would layer the color directly on top because Cinnamon Toast looks different by itself than it does layered on top. Do you see on top of the brick beige, it looks pinkier and rosier than it does by itself? So since you're going to be using it in this way, you need to test it out in this way. And here I see that the change is very subtle, and so this would be great if I wanted very subtle shadows. This is my light walnut. Again, see the difference by itself and layered on top. And this is a great color because this is in the same family, but it's a more marked difference. And so I would use that if I were wanted a slightly pinker skin tone and more prominent shadows. I could even double those up to create those uh, double shadow looks. And this is light tan, and that is really dark. Actually, I would use light walnut as a base for a darker skin tone a darker rosy skin tone and then use the light tan as a great shadow color if i want someone looking a super duper pale i use prismacolor almond milk 
and you're like, you didn't do anything. That looks like a colorless blender. I know, I know, it's really, really pale. And then I would take my Brick Beige and use that for my shadows. This is a Copic number E34 Oriental, which is a very golden skin tone. See how rosy and pink those are and how golden that is. So if you like that look, this is E33 Sand layered on top, and that's a great shadow color for that. If that's your skin tone, this is E35 Chamois. And that's a nice shadow color for that. Although I would say that chamois by itself looks a little bit too much like yellow ochre straight and it's bordering on green. And I think this is too green for skin tone. So this is the E35 chamois. But layered on top of the E33 sand, it makes a nice shadow color, but by itself it's a touch too green. And that's why you have to buy them in pairs like that. And here is uh, E23 Hazelnut, and that's a nice medium tone. And this is E25 Caribe Cocoa, which is a nice shadow color for that. And we're getting a little bit darker and rosier in here. This is the Prismacolor Light Tan on top of the Copic Caribe Cocoa. And that's a nice subtle shadowing. This is Prismacolor Dark Brown. And it's not my favorite dark skin tone. It's like a little, it's a little dull. I much prefer the Prismacolor Cocoa Bean. Because this color is just so rich and gorgeous. And it looks opaque like these skin tones here. Then I would take my favorite Cassell Dark Sepia to shadow that. That's Cocoa Bean on top of the dark brown as the shadow. So what I like to do and try to do is to buy kind of a family of colors where each can be paired so each color can be a base color and a shadow. And then the next one can be a darker base and a shadow, and then the next one can be a darker base and a shadow like that, okay? Saves up on markers, and then you get this whole family of skin colors at your disposal. Here's the cocoa bean again. And I shadowed it with black. And you see how artificial and strange that looks, even though this dark brown is such a dark color that you would think that the black would be okay? I think that that looks awful. Okay, so don't shadow with black, y'all. Even with the Faber-Cassell, which is my darkest, okay, don't shadow skin with black, no matter how dark Alec Weck black you get, don't shadow with black. Obviously, there are a million other marker colors out there, but I just named a few in my collection to help you guys get started in your skin tone marker hunt. If you get stuck trying to figure out your paint colors, try swatching a marker and try mixing a paint to match your marker color. Some people have an easier job of mixing paints when they have something to match it back to, okay? So if you want something that looks like this, okay, that looks kind of in that family. And so you know that I mixed brown and orange in the inks to create this color family. These colors are in here where I use the burnt sienna yellow ochre and the Naples yellow and a touch of that ultramarine to get this family of colors. There's another skin color that I like, Prismacolor Walnut. There's that beautiful mahogany, medium, rosy skin color in between your lightest, darkest, kind of in this family. Love that. Oof, that's pretty. With color pencils, you have one of two methods, okay? You can take one single color pencil and you can 
color everything lightly and then color your shadows in more darkly. This is Prismacolor in Burnt Ochre. And then you can just color more intensely to create the shadows, which is basically, you know, more saturated paint. Or you can take a color like this, and maybe you don't want this soft, dry, grainy look, and you want to really press in the color so that it looks more waxy and smooth. Okay, I'm doing this on Bristol board right now, which is my favorite paper for color pencil work. So really press that color pencil into your paper. And then, like you do with markers, is to just pick another color pencil in a darker color. This is Sienna Brown to put in your shadows. So I'm going to put in my cheekbone shadows, eye socket, nose ridge, nostril, under the lip. Okay, so there's your burnt ochre. There's your Sienna Brown alone. There's your Sienna Brown on top of your burnt ochre. Again, if you're going to use two colors together, layer them on top of each other like the way you would use them. This is beige, which is what I like to use for goldeny, pale, possibly Asian skin tones. This is Prismacolor in light peach, which is pinkier, and I think too pink for a skin tone. So what I'll end up doing is I'll mix it with the beige to create light but pinkier skin tones. Also an excellent shadow color for the beige. This is Prismacolor in peach. And I only get really this rosy if I'm doing children's wear because kids look cute with little peaches and cream rosy skin tones. Okay. And then here is dark brown in Prismacolor, which is a great chocolatey color for darker skin tones. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of color pencil skin tones because it's very rare that I do a full head to toe fashion illustration and color pencil, but these should get you started. And that's it guys. You know, I can't give you anything much more exact than that because you guys are all over the world and you are all using different painting styles, different paints, different brands of paints, you know, different brushes, okay, and different marker brands. And, you know, some of you are telling me about brands I never heard of before, and that's awesome. But this is to help you get started picking out good colors, some methods that I use when I'm trying to figure out skin colors, different media. If you have Marker, marker color favorites in the brands that you use that you want to share with us. Please leave them in the comments. You know, I love it. Like some of you guys have started uh, helping each other out. Like some people will throw out questions and some people will answer like, hey, this was my experience. And I love that. Like I would love to build a community on this channel where you guys are also helping each other by giving each other feedback and offering suggestions just as if we were in a classroom environment and students would be discussing what works for them and what doesn't, right? That's awesome. I love it when you guys do that. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you have something that works beautifully for you that you would recommend to someone else, especially in the color pencil category that is a little bit on the small side for me. As usual, if you have any questions, check the info box. If your answer is not there, leave me a comment below. Oh, and you know, uh, share, subscribe, like, you know, all those things that uh, vloggers are supposed to prompt you with, right? All that good stuff. Hashtag always be practicing, and I will see you next time.